Hello. And welcome back to Disco Elysium. I'm Agent Mischief. Let us get back into this um, very strange and very entertaining game. assist our colleague from the 41st prison here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker. Copy. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? You could swear she was friendlier with the tenant. Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. Could you connect me to the 40, 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. 10 2, 10 5. This is 41st. Come in. Over. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop. And cops know relay code. Ten four station forty one. I've got an urgent business. Over. Ten four message received. Ten five relay message. What's your status? Over. Just reporting in. Over. Ten eighteen. State your message, sir. I need to report my badge missing. But you said. N never mind. Lieutenant's eyes go wide. 10 9, over. My badge, I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. 10 4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10 22 the captain. Over. Over. Is it him? What does he want? A dry voice asks in the background. Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. Report it. He what? He lost his badge? Say nothing. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the best seller, Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. He says fighting off laughter. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Haha, ha, officers lost his badge, haha, ha, like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him, and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Over. Mullen dicked us. 
Can we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with. Captain for I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Supercop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Could you all please stop saying lost his badge for a moment? He asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. <laughs> Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. Say nothing. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. Enough of this now. I have other things to discuss. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. An animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun, too. Has he? Rubs of laughter. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Check your pockets. Check your. Holy fuck. You don't know where it is. Dude. Son of a bitch! <laughs> no. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. 10 9, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Convince them that you didn't lose your gun. Lying over the phone, it's easy. Just say it like it's the truth, and then it becomes it. Oh, of course I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. <laughs> Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. We can't have some gangbanger running around with it. Oh my god. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance. Over. This might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, 10 4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information, not fear. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10 4, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Hold on. Are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. That's a negative, sir. I got a 10 12 visitors present here. Over. Please refer to me with my full name in the future. 10 9 repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. Say my name. Sir, I will not have you talk to me in this manner. Over. Please just say my name, Jules. Uh... What? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. Any news about my, um, family? Ten... Um... Excuse me, sir. I just thought you might have heard of them, that's all. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed things weren't that good on that front. Over. Yes, let's wrap this up. Understood, sir. Over. Transmission completed. Standing by. Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. Well, I do need to do the Sylvie thing, This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? I need to connect me to civilian, a Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is her number, officer? Kim, didn't Guard give you Sylvie's number? 
Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Her slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. She finally returns. Yes, hello? A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Hello, this is the police calling. I have some questions for you about your last days at work. Oh, right. She recognizes your voice Hello, officer. What can I do for you? Was it you who called the police? No, not me. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the Union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. Got it. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Okay, next question. Yeah, go on. You quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. You can hear her tense up on the other side. Why not? Okay, did you leave because of Gart? What? No, why would you even think that? Sylvie, don't be afraid of that pig. You have to stand up for yourself. Please, don't bring Gart into this. It's none of your business. God, why can't you just mind your own business? She mutters. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. Have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. This exact conversation has happened before. Establishing authority before this young girl seems to have been important to you in the past. Don't go there again. My badge is missing. Have you seen it anywhere? Oh. No, I haven't, sorry. Real police have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Kim doesn't have a uniform and he seems real to me. He's in plain clothes, voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. Have you seen my policeman uniform? Uniform? I, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. You seen my gun. Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun detective. I hope it doesn't mean you flashed everyone. I'll kill him myself. Sounds beyond exasperated. I showed you my gun? When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and She stops hesitantly, not sure if she should continue. And what? What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. Oh, those again. I have been trying to wean you off them. Off of what? You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out, off of that, people don't like that. Hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the wall painting them red. I won't be seeing it, cause these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. Christ, dude. Okay, I don't know what to say. Me neither. Yes, but what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead, saying things like, Big bucks cannot lie, and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. I 
think I got everything I need. Thanks. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Wait, why does she seem angry with you? Let's try it. Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her at the Whirling in Rags when she was still working there. Wait, before you go, you're mad at me, right? Tell me, what did I do? I can't remember anything. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skua thing happened. It just made me want to quit. So you're telling me that I was the one who made you want to quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting. Union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... She pauses. Go on, I want to know what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I, I hate it now. Hold on, which song? We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. We're sorry. Sorry about the song. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant. And I don't want to know. And then you scream something about how you're a piece of shit human being and why does anyone even let you work as a policeman? That you fire yourself, but you can't even do that. I'm sorry. And then I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. Dude is a fucking maniac. I'm so glad he lost his memory so we can learn to be a proper human being. Jesus Christ. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Wait, police documents? I, oh, the ones I had to rent out of your toilet. What happened to them? I, damn it, I don't remember what I did to your damn papers. I don't remember every little thing I do. Resentment gives way to concern in your voice. Especially when there's a hurricane loose, it's your fault for losing them. Not mine. Something in you wants to immediately forget about this, as if there was a reason you threw them away. Okay, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. I am truly sorry for everything, Sylvie. God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. What skua thing? The stuffed bird. The great skua. You threw it against the wall while screaming fuck that bird and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. Why do I always end up screwing everything up? It was a pretty bird. There since I started working in Whirling. I really liked her. We call her Scotty. What else did I sing besides the ooh? I'm looking for a song. Oh, all sorts of things. Some disco, rock too. So much disco and rock. Was I singing the smallest church in St. Saints? Yes, that's the one you like to sing along to the most. The later it got, the more that one came on. Interesting. You still have to find a copy though, before you can blast it. I don't want to ask her more about Gart. Uh, right, thank you for talking with me. Take care. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? I'm done with the radio for now. 57, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. A radio, a metallic drawer, slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. No when I'm done with it. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. 
I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. Take the rubber tip pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. Rubber handled chain cutters. The handles are long and sleek. Snap snap go the cutters in your hand. You can do good work with these. Cut chains, locks, and ropes, especially belts. I should probably have all of these, so I'll take the flashlight too. It's robust, weatherproof, and well made. Police issue. Let's you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. Eh, better not. I don't want to fuck with this car. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Wait, there are copo types? Yes. Guess what's yours? Sorry, cop? I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Yes, sorry, cop. The co cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Okay, okay, well, what are the other copo types? Oh, you know. Apocalypse, Superstellar, The Advanced Interesting Cop, Liquid Shadow Cop. But you're too sorry to say those things. So, here we go. Um, won't the other copo types be jealous? What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copo type from sorry to anything. I'm sorry. Of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info or... Maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. That won't happen. Brutal. Okay, so can we put some points into Psyche? Morale up. Uh, let's put one into Empathy. Or that might be all we get is just Empathy, but we should probably have some Empathy. We're gonna work on Psyche the most, I think. Let me see, what gear do I have? Ew, he doesn't have a shirt! <laughs> I didn't notice that! <laughs> oh god. Searching for the collars, finding all these leads, track down my badge, track down my gun. Embarrassment to the party. Research time six hours. You're one sorry piece of shit. A cop penitent, flagellant cop monk. This is not a great rolling of work for you. You should be groveling at the feet of a feudal lord. Fighting lurid evidence against yourself at a Mazovian show trial or ripping the flesh from your back with a cat of nine tails. Whatever made you this way, you can be damn sure it was your own fault. Do it. Really criticize yourself. Who knows? You might uncover something of importance from your guilt-ridden past. Well, we don't want to internalize that too hard. Uh, we'll see what other shit we can unlock, or if we can unlock anything else. I'm, I'm just a sad little loser. Disco outfit. He has no shirt on. His hairy chest is exposed. The bottles inside. You should. You could pick them up if you had a bag. I don't have a bag though. It's so sad. Rudy Saint. He slain a b. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the coal. Hi. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What is your name? My name is Annette, sir. 
My mum? Her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window and suddenly jolts, her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing outside here in the cold because... I'm signaling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to help Mum out with the store. She doesn't seem to understand what you mean. Shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. What is school, anyway? School? Well, mine is a big yellow building on Boogie Street, and the people there run it. They say it's a charity. Isn't school more important than this? Mum says it's necessary to do both, because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. How's the business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Cursed? In what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Ass up. <laughs> I wouldn't really say it like that, but I guess so. She blushes. That sounds rather serious. You should probably look into this. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into here. The tenant makes a note in his notebook. Yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. But Kim, the plasmic manifestations. No such thing. The tent stands at your side, stern and serious. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? What do you know about the other failed businesses? Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. She looks a bit disappointed. Hmm, hmm. Stroke your chin. Enough about this curse for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. Hmm, well, what does a cop look like, then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover on which you see a strapping Vespertine officer. He looks grimly over the body of a dead woman. It's not your body that's important to your police work anyway, it's your points to your head. Head? Yes. No, your mind. Not head, child. Heads. A quick silver mind. This small guy looks like he needs four hours just to come up with a single idea. No, he's wicked smart in the stories. Sure, when the author does all the thinking for him, real policemen have to think and act on their own. Like you, sir, of course. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. She smiles mischievously. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. The cover image of Dick Mullen seems to stare at you with harsh disapproval. Okay, I'm going to do something now. <laughs> The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? Hey, why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? You don't, have to, you don't need to be worried, I'm here to help. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands, her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. You bite your nails. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? Super simple for a detective such as myself. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. 
want more? I bet I can guess why you buy your nails. I got a few reasons in mind. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. You're uptight because of your mother and the pressure she's putting on you. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. Either way, another ace seduction by the number one detective in town. It was okay, sir. She's still got a rebellious streak. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You think so? Fine, do better to do something about me. You're quite sober. She snaps back quickly. <laughs> oh, damn. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. Wait, how it do you... It takes effort. Wait, how do you know I'm usually not? Because you usually aren't. And I'm having a grand time. I sure hope you are, sir. She rubs her red nose. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar, somehow. There's something you're missing. What is romance? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. She smiles at the thought, perhaps imagining herself in that situation. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. What about a poor man getting a rich lady? It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Like during the revolution or something. I see. Those are unhappy books, for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost. But then it all turns out just fine in the end. What about when both of the men are bad? These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. What if it's written really well? Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either, because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. What about when everyone is poor? That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. Yeah, poor people are poor. <laughs> I guess, yes. People in books are always very interesting. Especially the romance people. I'm sorry, I don't know why I thought that one was so fucking funny, but it was. What about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask Mum. I think she has one about an excruciatingly painful breakup. I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. She pauses, trying to figure out the appropriate answer. No, no, think about it. When were they plunged into a torrid spiral of pain and recrimination, only it's really long and drawled out, scarred for life, phantom limb? Um, no, I don't know. She looks to you with puzzlement. Doesn't ring a bell? All right, I'll ask your mom. Yes, she knows books, definitely. She nods, relieved. What was that? An idea for an unfinished novel stuck somewhere in your forebrain? That's enough romance for me. I had other questions. Maybe some about other books? What are you missing here? What does this feel familiar? You have absolutely no idea. Familiar? How? You must have forgotten something you heard again. You stop calling me sir, I am but a working man. No, sir, I can't. It would be too tiring to refrain from it. It's already tiring enough to remember to say it all the time. It's nice of you to say I could stop, though. I get it. I, for example, can't stop making this face point at your face. That's a friendly enough face, most of the time. Who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old. Or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold red cheek then continues. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those doesn't make, a, doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. She smiles gleefully. Maybe it sounds delicious. Maybe someone will write a book about me one day. Why would they do that, sir? Because I'll be a superstar cop in the papers and everything. That'll show him. 
That's so cool. Maybe they'll make you a book cover picture and everything. Standing over a dead body, holding a gun. Okay, bye. I see you around in that. Oh, it's saving. Peek at all this stuff. This book, you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. This book is about pate. The cover stands very much to their man, surrounded by flames. Book style man from Hieldal in the wildfire. Hieldal. Book is a rose pistol and a half naked dame on its cover. Better watch your mouth around me, boy. Someone's probably over there being racist again. Book about board culture permits Frodo. Frodom. <laughs> Frodom. That's the religion around um, Frodo from the Lord of the Rings. Frodom. Look about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. Frodom. Frodom Baggins. Two roundabout north. Cape side apartment. Pierre. I don't know why I tried to say Pierre. I cannot speak today, apparently. Battery's broken window. Tibbs has windows. Nothing really to discuss with Kim. A bag in your hand. Perhaps you collect these bottles and sell them. Do I own a bag? I, I do not. I would love to have a bag. Somebody's probably annoyed that I'm not getting along with getting on with the mystery or whatever, but I'm having a grand old time just clicking on everything, talking to everyone, and being a weird son of a bitch. One operated view viewer has been banged up and operable. Go. Talking to ourselves? How many of these homeless? They're just in squall of seabirds. I sure do. Better bullet holes lines the wall. Wait, there's a bag. Talking to himself. Where did I find cans or bottles earlier? This coin operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 centims and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? What's a tourist attraction doing here? There was a revitalization project in 49. A design studio tried restoring Martinez to its pre-war glory. It didn't stick. What happened? They got as far as the street lamps and the statue on that intersection. Then something went sour. I suspect that something was Evar Claire, the union leader. He muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. Can we do something about it? We should have done something about the Union ten years ago. That ship has sailed, officer. Leave. So, I have, like, five bucks. find me a shirt. This is going to terrify me until the end of my days. I have to keep seeing the shirt full man. I 
nine bottles. Grrr. kid's mom and then let's go see about the dead body and then we'll go sell this shit you do something behind lieutenant kitsuragi's back sneak out after he's gone to sleep first and then I'll talk to you. Gift books and molten candy. Ooh. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundar somewhere. Sir, keep tell me about the Muscle Man books. Oh, Man from Hyundar. A very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. She looks at the books with some disdain. Why are they so popular? Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Sounds good. Which one do I start with? What does it matter? They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. She rolls her eyes and fiddles with her pendant. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelm Dallerman. The man from Hjelmdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. I don't have that much cash, so maybe later. Look at the display of books. Rows and rows of Hjelmdal men blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hjelmdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hjelmdal. Return to Hjelmdal. And the Solipsistic. Man from Hjelmdal and the Hjelmdal Man. <laughs> Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyomdal and the sages at the end of the world. Man from Hyomdal and the false god. Man from Hyomdal and the scorched earth. Man from Hyomdal, the Hyomdal colonies. Man from Hyomdal and the swamp beast. Man from Hyomdal and the snow crabs. Is that all? Not even close. Man from Hyomdal in hell. Man from Hyomdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hyomdal under the lake. Man from Hyomdal, Hyomdal burning. There's even the trial of death, a pastoral combat game book set in the world of Hyomdal man, and so much more. Do any of these books call out to me? A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Oh, what is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hyomdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. Between the throne and the Hyomdal man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyomdal and the Devil Woman. Interesting. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyomdal novels. Leave. We'll try to buy some shit later, maybe. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. Sorky, what board games do you have here? Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda, a very educational game for those interested in geography. 
Brow Britter is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. Yes. Kids, friends, chicks, I have all those. Then you're a lucky man, officer. Children are the greatest of treasures. She fiddles with her pendant, thinking. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. So what about these whirl things? Lousy auras there. No, role-playing games are popular among those types. You know, if you're into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. That they have rituals where they try to summon entities. Of the cold Highly floor, immoral stuff. You can still buy them though. She looks at the table crossing her arms. Looks like they're probably world related things. An endless variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, Second Edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art The Hunters of Catawack. Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? Anything that really catches my eye? There's a box that says Wirral, third edition mega setting supplements really module. Playing team the side D panel notes, him. a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures, a sticker on it displays 25 real. That price is steep, but then it's the third edition mega setting supplement, so it makes sense. Okay, anything... Okay, yeah, there's plenty of shit to click on in here. I'm just exploring. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. I'm just exploring, and I'm sorry if that bothers anyone, but I'm I'm a nose bitch, and I like to click on everything in sight, and if a video game will let me click on all the things, then I'm going to click on all the things, you know? Another boring book just discarded here. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Look at the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Uh-huh, interesting. Various paranatural books still litter the shelf. Storky, what books are these? Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, no. I can't buy any? The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, The Tragic True Love Story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay races in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. <laughs> Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality, Guillaume Bevy, stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. God, good for him. I really must insist you buy one of the books. 
Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. Sir, keep anything of note in this shelf? I would say... The Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Who or what is an innocence? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. So do you recommend it? Certainly. It's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. I can afford it, but I don't know if I can buy anything else. I'm interested in that Greatest Innocence book. A true cultural touchstone. Enjoy the read. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the Interact tab in your inventory. Dusty Tome is written on the history. Innocence is written by... I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry. Paolo Salomao, Lopez de Fuego, a mask fas fascist who tries to reach a conclusion on which of the innocences is the coolest in the world. The Greatest Innocence by Joao Paolo Salomao Lopez wow. de Fuego. The book is large and heavy. Crack open this immense tome. Browsing through the various chapters, you try your best to understand the ceaseless overflow. The sprawl of names, dates, places, events, historical. Most of it ends up as a twisted mass of facts inside your brain. Your educational survey is done. Did you catch any of that? No. Oh well, it's pop quiz time. Let's see what you've learned. This might take a few minutes. You ready? Sure, why not? That's the spirit. Here we go. Question one. Who was the first innocence? Oh yeah, this is what I was made for. That's so alright, go on, give me all the hints you got. A pop quiz is a short examination designed to test your knowledge without any prior warning or announcement. Such exams allow the teacher to assess how thoroughly the students have retained the material at hand. Voila, now blast that first innocence. Thanks for nothing. Dolores Day. Dolores. Incorrect. Dolores Day was the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. She codified parliamentary democracy and created modern institutions. Among these, the moral intern, she was powerful and beautiful on all her icons. Her colors are silver, white, and apricot. And when you think her name, Dolores, stomach acid rises to the back of your throat, and it hurts. You see a flash silver, a wreath, an airport bag, and blonde hair. You don't know why. Another choice, perhaps? Stay clear of this one. There's something terrible about this one. What? A strange sensation of loss. When she left the earth, the dust, and the ice, and the humans. That is unimportant to the quiz. Stop thinking about this. Yes, the quiz is impersonal. No need to rouse sensations in yourself at the mention of Dolores Day. Who was the first innocence? It wasn't Dolores Day. Sola? Incorrect. Sola was anointed during the previous century and even lived to see the current one. She was an urban planner who spoke her mind and largely left history to its own devices, encouraging people to excel on their own rather than prescribing to a deified model of history. She is often called 
and anti-innocence. Sola resigned after an assassination attempt by a Yugo nationalist who blamed her for not taking the side of the left during the turn of the century revolutions. Innocences don't usually resign. Care to try again? Barrett Carnassian? Correct. Nothing much is known about him. It's not even clear that he was a he. But Franco Negro presumed as such and called him Pius. He's depicted as a young man with molten gold pouring out of his mouth. All he spoke was gold. It's said he invented God and equality of men before God. He also introduced the gold standard as a way for measuring people's love for Aurum. As the first innocence, he declared that there should be more of those like him. It is presumed his disciples were the beginning of the Holy Party, the Founding Party. Question two. Who was the strongest innocence? Easy. Everybody knows the answer to this. You, me, anybody. Sure, sure, I can. I trust you've got my back. An innocence is the highest category of historical personage in the world. A literal personification of history. Traditionally, an innocence, when anointed, assumes supreme rule over the Occident or the known world in general. At least the parts that matter. Yes, yes, so interesting, but I thought you'd give me the answer to the question. Hmm, I can do better. Okay, so commonly an innocence does not enforce his or her power through military power. This is seen as unnecessary. The innocence wins because an innocence can't help but win, for their deeds are inevitabilities. Did this help? No. Damn. Dolores. Vesper Messina? Incorrect. Vesper Messina is not a person, but a defunct state on the southeastern coast of the Occident. It used to take up most of the peninsula before separating into the republics of Vesper and Messina. Get to try. Incorrect again. While she originated many modern institutions, launched several successful expeditions, and was even critical of the innocentic system itself and somehow keeps popping up in your mind she is not often considered the strongest even though the words most associated with her rule are l'amour la compassion la auto discipline love compassion self-control which could be seen as facets of strength would you like to try again correct the last one, named so. the innocence of militarism he codified hereditary rule but at the same time, ended serfdom and established the inter isolari real as the global reserve currency. He also established the concept of the nation. Franco Negro attempted to solve the rising tensions between the aristocracy and bourgeoisie by building a unified society in which every man has a place and a mission. But at the same time, may rise to nobility provided on the strength of his virtue. Question three. Who was the false innocence? Got it under control. No problem. Solid on this one. It's widespread historical information. You going to be helpful this time? I could use a hint. Yes. There exists a group called the Founding Party, known as the Holy Party, during the time of the American Ocean. This, the world's oldest international organization, spends its time in search of either the re-emergence of the innocents or new members. Sigh heavily out loud. There seems to be a mix-up with the sources. It's not my fault. At least it clearly wasn't Dolores Day. She wouldn't be false. She's beautiful. Correct. There have been a number of counter or false innocences. Some assumed to have innocent qualities. Some who just thought so themselves. Occasionally, they have the support of a faction inside the ecclesiastic organization, and accusations of foul play have arisen. The most famous and important of these was Erenau Pasternak. He was into torture, despotism, hymns, canons, and world conquest, but got defeated and humiliated by Stepan the Despicable. Of final stretch, you've come so far, and learn so much. This is the most important one. 
Question four, who was the greatest innocence? The most important of them all, the most precious to humankind. I've got it, honest. Are you sure this time I'll bite, hint me? Of course, this is my thing, the reason I exist in this world. The correct answer is Franco Negro. You're absolutely certain of this. Zero doubts. Correct. The Mesk might see Franco Negro as the father of nations, but as of this century, there's been a great shift in attitude. Dolores Day has become widely regarded as the greatest innocence. A most radical change to the whole fabric of the world. Everything from inter travel to the connected world to three consecutive scientific revolutions can be traced back to her. Every decade that passes, she seems less human somehow and more beautiful. Congratulations on finishing the test. The results and your I subsequent really grade have grade. been calculated. You get a D. Not particularly remarkable, but technically a passing grade. Not that anyone really expected better. You would have done better if you just left Dolores Day for the end. Dial the Dolores Day down a bit. Damn you, you arrogant book. What's going on with you? Lieutenant is jolted awake by your furious cursing. Thinks it's so smart. God damn. Okay. Lieutenant stares at you, his visage unflinching. He can't flinch. It's physically impossible for Kim to flinch. You are shouting at an inanimate object. Like a real weirdo. No wonder you seem to have trouble with the right answers. Uh, anything else in here? I haven't... Yeah, there's a couple things I haven't clicked on. I am... Taking longer than I thought. Quaint book, quaint picture book brochure, very colorful. It's a tome of fascist magic, rather candid. We'll talk to her and then we'll go examine the body. The book collects the national recipes of Arda. They're all about lake trout. I don't think there's something to click on here, but I don't know if there actually is. No, it just shows me that I can click on Kim. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Clark extends a greeting. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. So are you the owner of the store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Voice is high pitched as if to give it more penetration. Your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes. My daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? 10. She's certainly very polite and helpful. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Depends. How much do you pay the kid? Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. I guess at least she's getting some money? Even though she can't use it right now? I don't fucking know. Such criminal behavior would not happen in more developed countries. Some more developed countries, this sort of thing is two felonies. Child labor and slavery. Those countries will realize they've raised a lazy and spoiled generation. Are we done with the jokes now? Patronus is decisive, not at all angry at this insinuation. Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. Right. Tenet taps his foot. All this pressure has made her really anxious. You know she's been chewing her nails. God. Ugh. I've told her not to do that. It's such a disgusting habit. She'll get over it. Anxiety is a part of life. Her voice is firm. I don't think she can do anything about it. She can, if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. 
You are placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. Yeah, actually, it's super alright for kids to chew their hands off. Forget I said anything. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. She's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. <laughs> oh, no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. She stops at her mouth keeps moving. She told me she doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy helping me here. So she studied at home this trimester. This is a temporary solution, of course. I assure you, I of all people understand the importance of education. She will be back in school the moment the store takes off. And hell freezes over. Never mind. It's not a good topic to get into. Is she an only child? Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be nice if she had... No, we couldn't have afforded more children, really. Not in this economy. A glimmer of sadness blinks through the well-crafted exterior. Of course, yes, this economy. Exactly. She agrees wholeheartedly. Is this husband Annette's father? Yes. My husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. Soon we'll both be off for Grand Courant. Wait, Grand Courant? What's that? It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. Your it's a great wide. opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband's also involved with the bookstore? He made the initial investment. Since then, he's been what you might call a silent partner. Super silent. Almost inaudibly so. All right, I had something else in mind. The woman looks aloof. Her features much softer. Occasionally, she glances at her daughter's silhouette. Farewell for now, book peddler. Well, I'm glad she got to go inside. If nothing else, I let it, I made sure a kid got to come inside from the cold. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. You just can't win. Out of the rain and into the gutter. What are you doing now? Math. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Oh, oh, I found something while you were away. What is it? I thought this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. Not me. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. She gives you a hat, almost exactly like the one Dick Mullen wears on the covers. A detective hat? Yes, just like the one Dick Mullen wears all the time. You'll look way more serious with that. Right, I have to get back to my homework now, before Mum notices. Man, this is hard. You have absolutely no idea. Familiar? How? You must have forgotten something you heard again. Okay, bye. See you around, Nat. Fuck yeah, we're putting the hat on. <laughs> I still look ridiculous, but hey. I got a hat now. by this gigantic hole. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Why am I looking at this? Cop habit. You look at everything. This isn't case related, you think. What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Your vision is blurred and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. Reconstruct the movement. 
The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message written in the language of burnt rubber. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there and then accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manager. Rubber next. The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building, before heading south. Must have been in a hurry. The car drove through the fence. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. Is this connected to the case? I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen in Martinez. With the jam right here on the roundabout. I would keep them separate. You could follow the track south. There seems to be a canal there. See where they went. If you find the time. I will. I think I got it. Throwing rocks, a dead body can't be more can't be older than twelve. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Oh yeah, Napa Kumpi Kuno. What's the other kid behind the fence? Move your time, please. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! Kuno's rising at sea. He wipes sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. You kids siblings? The fuck are you talking about? He throws another rock. He's calling us f Kuno. He says we're fucking each other. No. <laughs> Kim, what should we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. The language these kids are using. Pure unfettered id. There will be no reasoning with those creatures. Fine. Sounds like spoiled meat and curled dairy. Human being decomposes. The letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. It's the logo of the municipality of Revishal. My bottles. My bottles. I could probably um, sell some bottles or whatever before um, I hop off. More magnesium. Hell yeah. I have 50 cents. Hell yeah. The winch mechanism's mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Why can't I talk today? <laughs> That's how I sound. I just sound like mum I'm mumbling. The kids' ladder is rickety but still climbable. The ladder is for kids who wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. I was trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. Do I have something I can like The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips yeah, are fish-like, and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Damn. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. 
The smell seeps in, even through your clenched nostrils. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. He took it to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! Wait, I have my... my shit. My tools. There, he still is, looking right through you. Uh, maybe if I switch the flashlight for the bag? in from your mouth more instant and more familiar than anything you would expected more fever than odor it fills your mind flushing you from within what it out I die of throwing up You feel a great force ringing from your stomach. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst. Until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. The smell of Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled spirit and bits of shish kebab. God. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. Lieutenant hand you his white handkerchief. Thanks. Wipe your mouth. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Okay, where are we getting ammonia from? That young woman, the gardener, mentioned she used salts for the smell. You know, it's sort of the plaza. If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the fridge store nearby. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the wipe check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Oh, why I leave? Okay, that actually, um, me puking myself is helpful. Um, let's go do that real quick. Oh, I could sell that. Very nice. Uh, let me switch, uh, the, the bag for the flashlight. I'm not dealing with these, um, wait. Oh, that's my puke, never mind. I'm not clicking on my vomit. I don't think me going, oh, so this is what I ate last night, or whatever would help me. And then from the gardener, and then we'll head to the Fritz store. Hello again, officer. You still have your How salts? How are things? I think I could use some. Sure. I'm done with them. She takes a small capsule of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It I've gave- It gives me a terrible headache. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, madam. Let's head in the store so we at least can sell. Bottles here. More bottles. More bottles. Stop. Bottles. Maybe. 
Kim, you're in my way, bud. Nope, I guess not. Ooh, money on the ground. Money on the ground. I will take all. Thank you. machine stands in the corner your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with a satisfying jingle you're a richer man now well that kind of blows actually you see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles the raincoats are transparent except for the big fritta slogan on the back the packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over a display. What's that? Point to the raincoat. What is what? Um, it's a raincoat. The girl leans over the counter to see what you're referring to. If you want to buy one, then it's only for real. She steps on the glass counter of the raincoats, patiently await purchase. Her attention is drawn to the raincoats. Stealing one undetected will now be more difficult. Leave. Yeah, I'm not gonna steal one. Uh, I'm good. Let's, um... Yeah, I, I best get off of here. I'll be on here all day. I, I'm immensely enjoying this game. It's, it's so fucking weird. Uh, thank you all so much for checking out this game with me and checking out the series. Um, if you've been enjoying all of, um, well, if you've been enjoying all of this, if you've enjoyed watching me play this, if you're enjoying my little commentary, if you're enjoying Let's Play, just whatever, um, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Leave a comment if you're feeling generous, and I will see you all in the next video, which should be this. Goodbye.